Um, I have two friends now. Yeah. Um, they're named. <laughs> I well, know. Yay for me. Two, two friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, named Amanda and um, Sierra. And we lived in these houses for 10 years and didn't talk to each other. Oh, wow. Today on the Messy Faith Podcast. Welcome, ladies. I'm Emily. And I'm Satricia. And this is the Messy Faith Podcast because life is messy, but... God already paid the maid. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Checked in the mail. Mm. Okay, so we got a fun episode today. We do. We do. How about this for a title? How to be friends with girls. Mm, friends. <laughs> How many of us have them? You remember that, friend, that song? No, I don't. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Old school. Let me ask you this. Is it super easy to be friends with a dude? With a gentleman? Yeah. It's so easy, right? Yes. Yeah, it is. So easy. Then why is it so hard to be friends with with girls and you're a girl? Um, I think a lot of girls, I think there's competition. I think catty stuff. I think there's judgment in there. I think there's comparison. It's like you never, never leave the high school lunchroom. I think so. And I, I'm not saying that for myself, but I think just in the girl community, I think those are the things that. Yeah, just kind of swirl around. All right. Yeah. Well, let's dive straight in that today because dive. Lord knows we need friends. Yes. You need friends. I need friends. If you have friends, that's freaking rad. Praise them. But like stats and statistics and people like tell us that like everybody lonely these days. Mm-hmm. Everybody's lonely. Yeah. So uh, we want to dive into our experiences, give mm-hmm. you some tips, yes. maybe learn a little something from you. If you drop some comments, give yes. us some thumbs up. You want to be our friend, you can join the community. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) HopeSociety.social. Make a friend. Yay. Save a life. So what what would you say or how have you struggled in the area of friendships? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, I'm a very fast-paced person. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I've been that way my entire life so finding people that can keep up with you Mm -hmm. and um is has been hard but when you do find them staying in the same rhythm Mm -hmm. to stay friends Mm -hmm. is even harder Mm -hmm. you know and uh, i mean i'm a i think am i a likable person you are (laughs) you are i think i'm a likable person but it's so hard so like uh we had a very good youth group experience. And so we had this core group of friends that even actually just recently we got together for a Christmas dinner and Aww. we haven't gotten together in like 15 plus years. Wow. I mean, we've seen each other, but not everybody in the same room at the same time. It was freaking amazing. That's dope. I know. Um, but we were the first of like our friends group to get married. Aww. And then we were the first of our friends group to have kids. Hmm. So like our, while we might still be friends, like our rhythm and our life stage just was not. And mm-hmm. like, we were just out of touch with them because of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm guessing. I don't know why. Tell me why. That was that hurt me. That hurt me. <laughs> that broke my heart. For a, the longest time, you know, you either have the friends that you work with because mm-hmm. you're in, you know, in, you know, there's that saying out of sight, out of mind. So yeah. the people that you see every day, you're going to befriend. Mm-hmm. Um, and so friends that are outside of your natural rhythms are super, super hard Yeah, to do. Um and so there was a period of time where I had a few friends, like my husband's mom mm-hmm. was like my really close friend for like a decade. That's dope, though. <laughs> That's dope because it's usually the opposite. I know. Um, obviously, my own mom is is my friend, but really having that close companionship, it was hard for me. I had one or one or I had a, I had a few people. So I'm not going to lie and say I didn't have any. Mm-hmm. Um, but what is crazy is right before the pandemic, um, we have a neighborhood and it's full of a lot of older people. But recently, like 10 years ago or whatever, recently, um, people with kids have have moved in. Mm. And so there were these two houses. Um, I have two friends now. Yeah. Um, they're named. <laughs> I well, know. Yay for me. Two, two friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, named Amanda yeah. and um, Sierra. And we lived in these houses for 10 years and didn't talk to each other. Oh, wow. And the same, yeah. But as soon as um, they the had, they had kids, mm-hmm. we had kids. Um, this was, this was before um, they started coming out. And so I would like, like talk to Sierra's husband more. Um, and then like 
Amanda's husband would come out with their little girl. And then finally one day, me and Sierra came out at the same time. Hmm. And our kids were playing in the cul-de-sac. And then we just started talking. Huh. And they were like, hey, you want to go on some walks? Huh. Like, yeah. So then every day we would go on just like a walk, like nice. during the weekday. Because um, I could, because I was working at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, I did something crazy. I was like, do you want a mountain bike? Because I was looking for something new, yeah. something novel, something that I could still do and not get too too injured in. And she was like, yes. You're so dope. So we just freaking bought mountain bikes and mm. just randomly started going mountain biking. Wow. Then uh, Amanda, Dublin's mom, we st- she was outside more doing her lawn. And we're like, I mean, we can't just be the two of us when there's a third one right there. Mm-hmm. So then we literally just said, hey, how's it going? And so then we started talking. Kids play in the cul-de-sac. We're like, hey, you want to go mountain biking with us? And she was like, yeah, it took uh-huh. her a few asks for her to like mm-hmm. get a bike and do it. But now, literally, we go bi- mountain biking twice a week. Oh, I love that. Every Sunday afternoon and every Wednesday afternoon. That's so dope. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. We've been doing it for like a year and a half. Mm. And this goes from like, literally, we lived in the same cul-de-sac for 10 years. Yeah. And then it just took <coughs> being outside talking and then... We literally have to like make our schedules work and be flexible with each other. But hmm. I think that was the key. We had to be flexible. And sometimes you just see who's around you and befriend them. Yeah. That's cool. Um, my my experience is, is not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your experience. Um, I think I've always naturally been a guarded person Mm -hmm. because of experiences that I've had in life, different traumas and things. I think I haven't been as open because I didn't want judgment. Okay. And so um, I think I can always remember kind of at an early age, I've never felt like I fit in, but I've never been an outcast. I've I've always been kind of socially accepted I think I've I've been popular. I've been like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I wasn't but you never let anybody in to see the real situation except for like small, like two or three friends, you know. And so and I think that was because there were so many layers to my life that I wasn't close. I wasn't comfortable um, sharing all those layers. Um, so I was always guarded kind of like mm, because if I let you in and you see these things, these are things you could use against me that would really hurt me. Oh, snap. And so um, it was more like kind of guarding my heart. And I think I've carried that through the years. Um, and so I think it's easy for me to speak with people and like people get along and desire to hang out. But I've always been very guarded and hesitant because I don't know people's motives. And I really love when I love, I love hard. And so... <laughs> not wanting my heart to get broken, like in the the friendship kind of way. Like if I'm your friend, I'm really going to be your friend. I'm going to be honest and transparent about my life. And if doing that, that means that you now have tools and access to hurt me. Oh, snap. And so So it's like being okay with being completely vulnerable to somebody. Yeah. And because I'm not a fake person. So I can't have a friend and be like, yeah, girl, hey. And then I go home and I'm suffering. Yeah. Like, I'm going to need to tell you I'm suffering. I'm going to need to cry on your shoulder. (laughs) Yeah. To tell you all the deep depth darks of, and I feel this way and I feel horrible that I feel this way. Like, uh, I'm going to bear my soul to you. And so I'm guarded because that's a lot of power to give to another person if, you know, you hear people, they're not friends, and then the person uses all the secrets to, against oh, that person. No. And I think what I've always... Jerk. Yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely. That speaks Don't more to jerk. their character. Yeah. yeah. And so <clears throat> I think I've always kind of been afraid of that. So I have I feel like I always feel kind of awkward. And I can, like, smile, but not let people get too close to me. And so that's something that I like struggle with for a long time. And then I went through a season where it's like, I really want friends. Like I want a best friend, God. Um, And I've had like, I had one one person I can think of, shout out to Leticia, but um, she's been a solid friend that, but I feel like she understands because she's gone through some similar things. Yeah. And so like we get each other. So when we get together, we can like check in on our families. We can, there's no judgment because we get it. Like, and then we get, not only do we get it, but we're also trying to build and grow 
and desire more too. Yeah. So it's not like a, I'm comfortable this way and you know, it is what it is. But so I, we relate on that way. So there's always been a safety with her. Yeah. Um, and then other people I've kind of, I think I've been solid in like, I'm not super driven by my emotions. And so people come to me a lot of time for like mentorships or like advice and stuff. And so I've tried to like turn those into friendships, which is horrible, <laughs> which is horrible. Um, I think people who are in your life, they're in there for a reason and mixing categories don't always go well <laughs> if it's not the Lord. And so <laughs> mixing categories, mix, you're mixing my cat- fun friend. <laughs> yeah, Literally though, like you're my serious friend. Y- you're my uh, deep friend. We can go deep and talk about depths, but you're no fun. Oh, in, snap. Or, how, so how do you label me? Wait, don't tell me. I'm going to tell you. Okay. Tell well, me. I got to get to that. Oh, okay. 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 Um, but so, yeah, like being guarded. And then I tried to turn those. And then those, I was feeling like it's more work because when you're going to, you want to go to a friend to just like, huh? But now you're like having to give advice too much. And I'm not talking about normal friendship advice yeah. and counsel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like every day. It's They're always taking, takers. always taking and always never taking. giving. OK, yeah. yeah. And f- me feeling deplete and even getting anxiety and overwhelmed based off the things that they're going through. Oh, snap. And even them being at a place of maturity to make wiser decisions. Yeah. Not being there yet mm-hmm. and me not being judgmental of that. But it is affecting my mental health because you're making these decisions. And now I'm like nervous or afraid for you or now I'm yeah. and I'm on this roller coaster yeah. with you and your emotions when I was just supposed to be a mentor or this kind of friend and cut that off and go do other stuff but not drag you into everything and now yeah, yeah. everywhere I go there's this you know like um stress yeah, yeah and so I had to learn that lesson too like okay God called them into your life but maybe they don't go into every category maybe there's probably wisdom in what you're saying right now yeah like probably a lot of wisdom I think so I, it's I, like know your role jabroni yeah that's from wrestling yeah okay. but um but yeah like knowing like what you're in my life for. That's something that I had to really like kind of get with friendships. Like, am I called to just be like a support to you? And if so, that's okay. But I can't make you be my safe place because I'm supposed to be the thing you're leaning on. I'm not supposed to, they, there's a saying, they say, don't dump down. Like in ministry, they say, don't dump down. It's like, I can't come to you with my stuff because that's not, that's not appropriate for the relationship that we're supposed to have. There's people that I'm supposed to go to for that, but I'm supposed to be a support to you. And so just learning those differences. And so I went through, I would be like, please, I just want a best friend. I just want a friend. I want a friend. And it had me, like I said, take those. And that that caused a lot of other stuff that yeah, just yeah. unhealthy because it's un- you're trying to be, you're trying to form something healthy with people who aren't necessarily in the healthiest spaces, you know, in their life. And it's like, okay, I need to be the one that's the pillar in this Mm -hmm. relationship and Mm -hmm. I need to get that other stuff from somewhere else. And so now what I had to learn, which is where you come into play (laughs) (laughs) that I need to look for in a friend. It can't only just be fun because Mm -hmm. there's a lot of toxic people that are fun. They're like a ball and we would have a great time, but then there's that other stuff too. But looking for friendships that pour into me as well as me pouring into them. And you and Lauren are definitely people who pour into me. And hopefully I pour in some way to you guys. Oh, for sure, girl. Oh, for sure. so, like, you guys are both 100% totally different from any other friend that I've ever had. Like, totally. But it's the healthiest friendship that I've ever had. And I think I'm embracing, like, being different because there's something that you bring to the table that um, in your experiences in your life um, that I didn't experience, but it adds to value to my life. Yes, yes. And the same with like Lauren, even in personality stuff. I think there's just something that um, in being different that it's a blessing. Yes. And so before I think I was looking for someone that was like me uh, and okay. and that understands me. Yeah. And it's like. You don't have to understand me, but as long as you don't judge me and as long as you yes. respect me, yeah, yeah. we can grow. Like we can, I can learn from you. You can learn from me. And so totally, that's where you come into play. Oh, well, thank my you. My healthy friend. <laughs> I'm healthy. <laughs> yes. And it doesn't mean perfect. It's just, oh, for sure. it's healthy. It's like, we're honest about not being perfect, 
when we're struggling, we say we're struggling. We know when to lean on each other and when to, lean, you know, like, yeah, it's like a mutual back and forth. It's not just like I'm always leaning on you and never. Yeah, totally. You know, yeah. So um, let's. OK, so if we have a healthy friendship, like what would be. Let's just digest like how we come to the table. So if somebody's like looking for friends, like I was looking for friends and like praying to God, God, help me give you a friend. Um, I guess my first advice would be look who's around you. Mm -hmm. Like look who's around you. And then I I can't get over. You're like, I label my friends. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, And see who you're okay being vulnerable with, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and kind of go because it's like no risk no reward kind of yeah. thing right friendship like you said is supposed to be reciprocal mm-hmm. so and also it takes a lot of time it does like it's going to take some of your energy and it's going to take some of your time yeah um but if you can do that i i know that there's two types of friends i've had there's friends where you go hang out with uh and then you come back and you were like I know. Dirty. I, yeah, not, no, 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 felt a little dirty. <laughs> a little dirty. <laughs> You're like, gotta repent. That, no, that didn't, no, not that kind of friend. <laughs> I was like, why? I don't feel like added to or lifted up, mm-hmm. I guess. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. even when, and then there's those friends that you hang out with and it's so in like enriching and mm-hmm. you feel like no time has passed. Yeah. Um, And I don't know what that is, but I guess that's a sign. Yeah, you want to be around those people more. Yeah. Yeah. I I think the I know it sounds funny. The labels are compartment, but it's knowing who to be vulnerable with, too, because I don't think certain conversations that maybe me and you have, you might not have that with Amanda and is this Sierra? Sierra. Sierra. Sierra yeah. yeah. You might not have those same conversations and maybe things you do with them like we don't go mountain back. I mean, mountain my, mountain, mountain bike biking. riding. Yeah. I would love to, You're but definitely I, don't welcome. <laughs> I don't know, though. I don't know about that one. But it's no, you know, like those those are your mountain bike friends. I'm going to get you on a bike. <laughs> you, you might. You might. You <laughs> but just knowing to and not having this expectation because I'm like, the, let's match. Let's wear matching shirts. Let's talk every day. Let's. And I've had to, <laughs> I've had to draw back to like, OK, I don't have to be codependent. Like, yeah. I'll talk to you. And if, if we don't talk every day, I'm okay with that. But if I, I know if I need you, you'll be there. I know I can trust you and be vulnerable with you. And then there's other people that it might just be like, I want to do something adventurous or silly fun and crack jokes. And this is the friend for that, but not like trying to make them be everything, like being okay with whatever that person can offer you and not trying to make them be or you know, be something yeah, else. For, like for real. If for this real. is if all you have to offer me is a good laugh, I'm okay with that. So I think what you're explaining really, really well is that you're um you're setting clear expectations. Yeah. Like what you're expecting from people. And I think that's a lot of times where, especially me, I have failed is because I have set unrealistic expectations for like this person or that person and when they they don't meet them Mm -hmm. i get really frustrated but they have no idea that i had these expectations for them yes and so it's like and 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 friendship in the words of shrek is like an onion you you gotta (laughs) peel it back in layers yes you know and so is they're built it's built in you know in layers so you gotta build a foundation Mm -hmm. And so I guess what I'm kind of hearing you say is that if you set your expectations like at the simplest level, Mm -hmm. then when they meet them, it's almost like an invisible test. Mm -hmm. And then you build on that. And then when they don't, that's horrible to say passive test, but it's kind of like a a safety test, a a value test. Like, do we match in values? Because Mm -hmm. if you don't match in values, there's only so deep you can go before it's just unpleasant. Yeah. Um, But it doesn't mean... That you can't be friends. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Because, but it means that I'm not, I'm not going to come to you with. In certain situations. This, yeah. Because totally. I know our values don't line up. So I, why would I? Totally. Yeah. I was labeling the friendships like, and I know somebody, um, a few people have told me this before, um, who I was like, I just want a friend. They're like, there are friends for a season mm-hmm. and then there's friends for a reason. Mm-hmm. And then there's friends for a lifetime. Yes. So there's like these, I guess they were labeling every labeling yeah so they are friends too you know and so then it's knowing i guess which one those are yeah. are those friends for a reason like you were mm-hmm. saying you're going to be a support to that person 
are they friends for a season, Mm -hmm. meaning you work in the same area or you're in the same ministry for a set period of time, maybe like, you know, three years. Or same job. Heck, heck, a season could be 10 years. You Mm -hmm. don't know. Um, And so that's a season. But then you have those friends that are like for a lifetime. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that you're calling them every day on the phone for your entire life. It Mm -hmm. just means that when you see them again, like I'll use the example of the, the friends that (coughs) I came out of youth group with is like it, it's been like, we see each other in like spurts, but Mm -hmm. every time it's like no time has passed and we pick right back up where we were and fill each other in on what's been going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, completely removed but it still stays as deep as it was yeah every time you meet and talk yeah you know that's kind of like how um my friend leticia like we don't talk every day we won't there there will be like months and months that we don't see each other but when we do it's like like time hasn't passed yeah so yeah okay so the clear expectations Mm -hmm. man i think you nailed it with the judgment is because we're we're women, so we're we're always projecting. Yes, you know, a little something extra. Me, mm-hmm. <laughs> like I wanna, I wanna be like this, and so you're, you know, you're trying to project better than you you are, um, huh. and so I think that causes uh, everybody puts that f- facade up. I guess I don't mm. know. I don't know. I don't know if I do. Never mind. Yeah, because I was like, I don't <laughs> think I, I don't do. do that. Am I describing some... somebody fake? Yeah. for sure never mind no but I think we I think sometimes we can be intimidated by okay there you go that's a better word yeah and I think that can like make us feel less than so then we don't like how we feel when we're around this person because we feel like they have their stuff together and I don't every time I see them it makes me feel like I don't have my stuff together so I don't want to be around you know and it could really not even be that they're doing that but it could be like our own insecurities too that can make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. I think another another thing we could do is um, leave, leave the high school judgment alone. Yes. And un- un- understand that everybody has gone through something, mm-hmm. right? And we don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, but if you are meeting somebody for the first time or getting to know somebody, just have that sit in the back of your mind that they've gone through some, through some things yes. or they're going through some things. And so I think that helps us sit in a place of less judgment if we're if we're, you know, holding that up in our mind. Yes. And practically, like practically, I was going to say something like, how much do I say? But like even in our friendship, I feel like we have the same like morals, morals and standards. I think we have the same heart. Mm -hmm. Um, But we parent, I think, differently. (laughs) You're like how to say like you're an insane parent. No, no, no. You're cool. Like we parent differently, I think, for different reasons. Yeah. I think some a part of like how I parent is because of the experiences my children will have being who they are. Yeah. And I think you parent based on experiences like your your children will have Mm -hmm. and then even experiences you you've had. Yeah, totally. And me the same. And I think one thing. um I'm grateful to God for is that um, I know it's not me. I know it's the Holy spirit is I'm not judgmental. And I think sometimes people have a hard time um, doing things differently than other people. So they think, Oh, because I think this is right or the way to do it. You should too. And if not, I'm looking at you as different or less than or something else versus seeing like that works for you and your family. This works for me and my family. We can coexist together without having to like recruit the other one over to the this side of doing this oh, that yeah. way. It's like friendship flexibility. Yeah. So in life, they say that's one of the most important skills you can learn and teach your children as well as flexibility. Mm-hmm. Right. Because things aren't always going to go as planned. Yeah. Like, as we know. Um, and so I guess that's like if you can be flexible with your fr- with your friends as well. Yeah. Then that gives them the grace to, you know, kind of live And be free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I might let bring a tablet for my children to, like, play. um, And our friend Lauren might bring books. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? (laughs) But she's not looking at me like, your children are using a tablet. Yeah. And I'm not like, oh, your children are reading a book and I'm so horrible because mine aren't. I'm like, good, what you reading? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then somebody, I don't know if you do this, but you might say, oh, my kids can watch YouTube freely 
on their tablet and I might say my kids can't yeah. you know what I mean yeah, yeah but does that make your decision bad and my decision bad or I might my marriage might look like this your marriage might look like that so it's even within like the friendships understanding that we're not the same family or the same people yeah and your your standard or structure that you have doesn't have to match mine and I can still respect you and I can see the beauty in yours because I look at the way you parent and it's cool it's beautiful like I look at you as a mom and I'm like uh, it's dope you know like I'm like oh, I love the freedom like when I see you and I see your kids I see a freedom and that to me I admire that mm -hmm. but there's certain things that I'm like okay I can loosen up a little bit here on mine but then there's other things I'm like I'm not going to loosen up on that yeah. but it doesn't I don't have a, like a an opinion or judgment on you yeah. based on that. Yeah. But I can see the beauty in how you do it and I can see the beauty in how I do it and we can coexist and love each other and be in freedom. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's so crazy. Cause you're describing, um, as you're describing the ability to do that, it just sounds, I know I hate to bring it back to this, but it sounds a little <laughs> Christ-like. Uh, amen. <laughs> <You know? That's laughs> Seriously. <the goal. laughs> yeah. Well, like how he's just non-judgmental. And the things that he says are in love when somebody needs to grow, he's going to help them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so yeah. what, what you're describing is like, so it's like the best thing we could do to be better friends to people is mm -hmm. to get closer to God yes. and to understand his character more. Yes. I know. That sounds like super cheesy, like Sunday no, school, but, that's, but that, like, that's legit. That's real. Because how do you get less judgmental? Yeah. We're realizing how ridiculous you are and how amazing God's grace is. Yes. And it's just exactly what he did for you. Yeah. And so, and then it's like, oh, that person's nothing compared to me. Mm -hmm. meaning, meaning like, like I've done so many things. Yeah. Like they, I don't know what I'm saying. No, I get it. It's like the... Eat the meat, spit out the bones. Yeah. There's things and areas that I can learn and grow from you. Yeah. And there's things that there are bones that is like that works for you, but that doesn't work for me. And being OK with that. Yeah. Not having the judgment. And I think that's like the piece that looks like Jesus, because he's not coming to like everybody line up and do everything <laughs> the same way in uniform. And everyone he's like, this is what works based on all the things that are going on in your family. This is what works for all the things that are going on in yeah. yours. Yeah, yeah. And I still love you. I still want to be around you. I still see you. Yeah. So the number one thing here is drop your expectations of yes. friendships. Yes. Label them properly. And it might yes. take you a minute mm -hmm. to label. It might take you a minute to figure out that this friend is a friend for a reason yes. or a season. And then be you, like Jesus. Yeah. Stop being judgmental. Stop being judgmental. <laughs> and then reflect back at the people who are still in your life and how long they've been in it. Yeah. And are they your friends for a lifetime? Yeah. And heck, maybe you haven't really found those friends yet. Mm -hmm. Um. I think there's wisdom in that. And then it takes off this pressure because if you just look back, look who's around you mm -hmm. and look who's been behind you and who's still there now, mm -hmm. you can, you can get a picture and just, just know that keep praying for a friend because I prayed for years and then I got some Yay. and I got more than I prayed for. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so, me too. Me too. um, just keep, praying specifically but you know what i i know that god is good and so i know that he's placed at least one person around you yeah that can that can fill one of those things yes for sure you know don't be desperate <laughs> don't be desperate yeah. just be open and willing and let the lord lead you exactly yeah. so drop your expectations yes be willing to give some time and energy and be more like Jesus. Be more like Jesus. That's how you be a friend. Yes. All right. And also, if you're in, in the market for some friends, you can check out our community. Yes. At hopesociety.social. Yeah. Well, I hope this has been informative. We'd love to hear about your friendships, your struggles. If you have any questions, this is definitely a topic we're going to hit again. But until then, Satricia, yeah. it's been a good day. It's been a great day, Emily. <laughs> All right, ladies. Talk to you next week. Bye. How dead. <laughs> All right. How do we turn this thing off again? Thanks for listening or watching to the Messy Faith Podcast. Go ahead and like and subscribe. And hey, check out our latest video.